Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to Amy's Bookshelf. If you are like me and you have seen Barbie recently and you now have a Barbie shaped hole in your heart, then I am here to help. I have six book recommendations today that I think all channel the same energy as Barbie, especially the emotional parts, the bits that really hit you in the feels. So if you found Barbie to be an emotional roller coaster, then these books are probably for you. Uh, so I saw Barbie last week and adored it. Every expectation I had was either met or succeeded and honestly I would happily go see it again. It was so much fun, so brilliant in terms of visuals and the overall vibe of the film but also the deeper parts of the film were exceptional as well. I'm not the best at articulating myself um, when I talk so I'm going to read you my review from Letterboxd because um, it's only short and I am much better at writing than I am at speaking which is why my YouTube videos probably feel a lot more chaotic than my blog ever does. But here you go. This film had so much expectation I was almost worried that I would feel like I couldn't love it because of that but I was wrong. It is incredibly easy to love. It's packed with big overtly feminist moments while also weaving in smaller nods to what it is to be a woman today. The narrative arc of the Barbies believing that they've sold misogyny and equality only for stereotypical Barbie, Robbie, to learn that the world is not like Barbie land is exquisite. It goes without saying that America Forever is a sensation, but of course seeing her on screen I couldn't now imagine anyone embodying the quintessence of Barbie like Margot Robbie. So much is explored in a film that is under two hours, almost unheard of nowadays. Motherhood, identity, autonomy and the human condition to name just a few. It's a sucker punch of emotion and one for the ages for sure. So there are my thoughts uh, on Barbie. If you want to follow me on Letterboxd, then I'll leave the description, uh, the link in the description. Um, and yeah, as you can tell, I really liked it. But there were so many themes and so much explored in the film that I think you could give a plethora of recommendations in terms of books. But what I really want to focus on is the feminism, the idea of motherhood, the idea of womanhood, um, and other sort of more deeper and emotional themes that were explored. So like I said, I've got six recommendations for you today. I will go through them one by one, talk a bit about the books, how I thought they were relevant to Barbie, why I'm recommending those books, and hopefully convince you to read some of them. So let's get into it. Okay, number one, and starting with a book I think epitomises Barbie and every frustration they are trying to communicate in the film, and that is Kim Jong, born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju. This is translated from Korean and I read it probably two or three years ago now, so it's been a little while. It's only a short book, I think it's actually under 200 pages. Yeah, it's like 160 pages and it's an absolute sucker punch of a novel. It's set in South Korea and it follows Kim Jong from her childhood to adolescence into her adulthood and essentially throughout her entire life. And as we follow her in this very short book, we basically see how misogyny slowly starts seeping into her everyday life and how that affects her on a day to day basis. The book covers loads of topics um, like misogyny, sexual harassment, uh, postnatal depression and for such a short book there are a lot of themes and different elements of it to explore. Not only that but the author substantiates what they're talking about by referencing real life statistics so while this book is a work of fiction there is a lot of relatability to real life because the whole point of the book, the whole thing that the author wants to communicate is Kim Jong could be any woman, she could be plucked straight from real life and all of her frustrations, all of her hurt and pain that comes from living in a patriarchy in a man's world can easily be found in real life and in most women's lives as well. So this book is basically on living in a man's world and like I said completely epitomises I think every frustration and every element of misogyny and patriarchy that we see in Barbie. So if you want to hop straight into something as deep and meaningful then definitely definitely get a copy of this. Next is Betty by Tiffany McDaniel and this is the book that I want to say is on growing up before you should which is I think something a lot of women have to do. Now Betty is a book that I read last year and it was actually one of my favourite books of the year. I absolutely adored it. Again it's an emotional ride so come with tissues prepared. Betty is about Betty Carpenter who is born in a bathtub in Appalachia, has a lot of brothers and sisters not all of whom have survived um, childhood um, and lives with her family. Now the book does go through uh, her childhood so she's not the same age throughout but she is a child throughout the book um, so it does span a few years but very much her being a child. 
when I wrote about this book and when I spoke about the book I very much spoke about how it was Betty trying to find her place in the world, find her voice and her, her identity and being set in the 1950s in America, in Appalachia, she is very much held back by the men in the world. Now there are elements of this book that also explore other things that she is held back by, other types of oppression um, such as race and also poverty um, but if we are talking about Barbie and relating it to women and the patriarchy definitely Betty being a woman, being a girl is something that she experiences as being detrimental to her progression, to her finding her voice and finding her beat. Um, and like I said it's very emotional, there are a lot of horrible things that happen in the book to Betty and to other characters so make sure you look up trigger warnings. But I think the thing that this book really captures that again circle back to what I said at the beginning is Betty having to grow up before her time. A lot of it explores like the joy of being a child but a lot of it you also see Betty um, having to hold the weight and the pressure of doing things before she has to, of being an adult before she has become an adult for various reasons, one of which being the patriarchy and I think that's something that isn't necessarily explored in Barbie um, overtly but something that I think is very relatable for a lot of women because we are expected to hold these roles as say mother or of caregiver that means that when you are a child and for example you're trying to be a caregiver you're trying to be emotional support that isn't something that you're necessarily mature enough to have been able to do yet but you are expected to do it because often women are seen as these caregivers so I think that's an element of the book that is explored really well um, and again that's why I think it's something that is related to Barbie and captures that in the same way. Now the next book is sort of a segue and that is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. The reason I say it's a segue is because I felt the two books um, were very similar in that they were told from a female child's perspective, so from a little girl's perspective. And there's something truly fascinating and equally heartbreaking about that um, because both of them have elements of naivety, of innocence, um, an innocence that's completely shattered at certain points because of things that both Betty and Pecola who's the protagonist in The Bluest Eye have to endure. Now the reason I talk about The Bluest Eye in relation to Barbie is because it's very much about image, about the ideal of a woman and about what a woman, what the perfect woman should look like and how not everybody is going to fit into that box. So The Bluest Eye is famously a very feminist novel in that Toni Morrison very much communicates how detrimental it is to be unlike the perfect ideal of a woman. So the book is about Pecola Breedlove who is 12 years old and every day she prays to have blue eyes. Now Pecola is black and she very much sees the blonde blue-eyed girls of the world or the children of the world actually being the perfect people um, especially with regards to living in America and she desperately desperately wants that. Obviously praying is not going to change the colour of her eyes and like I said before there's an element to this novel where because she's a child there is just so much heartbreaking innocence to it that again it's definitely another emotional one. I think Toni Morrison uses this book to talk about the social and cultural conditioning that we all experience in the world especially if we are women especially if we're not white and the conditioning that's so intrinsically woven into our society that's just expected to be normal um, and that we should accept. Now like I said uh, Pecola is black and and a lot of the uh, book discusses and focuses on race so I think that's another element of the book that isn't necessarily related to Barbie. I do think The Bluest Eye has another level to it because obviously it talks a lot about racial oppression as well as gender oppression but if we're going to keep with the gender theme to do with the patriarchy and to do with Barbie then the reason I think The Bluest Eye is a perfect book if you're looking for a book um, from the perspective of a woman who doesn't believe she is perfect because she is not what the patriarchy wants her to be. Next is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zauner. Now this is an autobiography so it is non-fiction. It largely discusses grief and the reason I want to talk about it in relation to Barbie is because it is about motherhood. Now motherhood I think is something that is very very much explored in the film Barbie because of Gloria's character and her relationship with her daughter. Gloria is so central to the plot of Barbie. I would argue even more than Barbie herself or stereotypical Barbie I should say because there are a lot of Barbies. Um, but yeah, Gloria's relationship with her daughter, her loss of innocence, the way that she played with Barbies when she was younger, how her relationship with her daughter has changed over the years and how that much that is tied to the Barbies and to that loss of innocence is a really interesting storyline. Similarly, Crying in H Mart discusses motherhood in a way that I haven't really seen it explored before. The main point of the book is um, 
the author talking about how when she was 25 her mother died of cancer. Obviously that is truly heartbreaking um, and the author definitely doesn't shy away from that but what's really interesting is while she talks about her mother with fondness she also talks about her mother in a really truthful and honest way being that she doesn't make her out to be this saint. She doesn't look at her with rose tinted glasses just because she's dead. She lays everything out on the table and just says the honest blatant truth. Because the book is mainly about her relationship with her mother and her mother is now dead, it is obviously this beautiful rumination on grief, but equally I love the way it explores her relationship with her mother, the messy and complicated feelings that she had for her when she was alive, that she has for her now she's dead, and I really loved just how messy and imperfect it was. And I'd really recommend it if you're looking for more reading about messy mother-daughter relationships. Okay, next up is The Old Woman and the Life by Gu byung Mo. This is another Korean translation, actually. Well done, South Korea, for having a lot of feminist literature. Um, now, this one, I think, is a bit of a rogue choice for this list, but I wanted to include it. Um, and the reason I say it's a rogue choice is because the way I described it when I spoke about it on social media was that it was on ageing as a woman. Now, I don't think that's something that's overtly ex talked about in Barbie, but I do think it fits so well into the themes and the narratives and the other topics in the book that I think it's okay that we segue into this. The Old Woman and the Knife is a fun and very different book, um, and it focuses on Hornclaw, who is an assassin. Um, she has been doing the job for a long time, but she messes up one day and suddenly her world comes crashing down when she is threatened by a younger male assassin who is essentially going to take her job. Now a lot of the book focuses on her job, on the fact she is an assassin. Um, think sort of Killing Eve but maybe not quite as violent. Um, there's not actually that much action in the book um, but I just love the way it's subtly discussed both being a woman and also being older and feeling like you can't compete with the people who are maybe 20, 30, 40 years younger than you are and I thought that was done really well. It also talks a lot about what it's like to be a woman in a male dominated industry which is obviously something a lot of people can um, relate to um, and as something that is also discussed in Barbie when Ken goes into the real world I obviously won't give any spoilers um, but yeah very briefly touches on it and yeah I think this is a great way to read more about that with a very similar tone. And the final book is Girl Woman Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I read this a little while ago now probably four years ago and I still really love it. So I should firstly point out that not every character in this book identifies as a woman but I would still I still think that one of the main focuses of the book is about womanhood, is about being a woman in a man's world, in the patriarchy and the way that that can affect being a woman. The book is set into 12 different chapters following 12 different people. They are all black characters and most of them are women and it is essentially just a snippet of their life. All of them live in Britain and it spans almost a century over all of the 12 stories. What I loved about the book is it's in a real eclectic mix of characters but equally it feels like they're all very real and very palpable and similar to Kim Jong it feels like they could be pulled straight from real life. It's a very realistic and a very relatable narrative um, and I think everybody could take away something different from the story and also everybody could see themselves at some point in each of the stories. I remember what I said about this in my review was that the plot isn't what keeps you going in this book it's very much the people you fall in love with them you become invested in their stories and you really just want to read more there's a lot of really brilliant moments um where it's very strong-willed characters shutting down patriarchal norms and i think that in itself is enough of a reason to read it if you really loved barbie Okay, so that is all six of my books. Uh, I hope that you have some recommendations um, and you like the sound of some of them. Um, like I said, I really loved Barbie. If you haven't seen it, please go watch it because it is a really great film and it's a really great film to see in the cinema as well. So if you can, I'd really recommend it. If you've got any books that you think are great books to read after you've seen Barbie and you want to continue reading or you want to fill the Barbie-shaped hole in your life like I did, then please let me know in the comments. I would love to discuss. I'd love to hear what you think encapsulates the same feelings as Barbie did. Uh, yeah, and I hope you've enjoyed. Um, if you have enjoyed, please subscribe to my channel um, and please like this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!